Hey, this is Kevin. Hope everyone's doing well. Um, I just wanted to comment on the market correction and just some thoughts that I had around being an investor. Um, you know, financial planning is about everything, including investing, but investments uh, in times of market panic are probably the most important part of the financial plan. So uh, I want to augment my communication with this with this quick video. Um, I just want to remind everyone of the facts. Uh, from 1995 to 2014, uh, equities returned uh, nearly 10% a year. And to give you some understanding of what that means is that if you had a dollar um, in uh, equities, let's make it $100,000. If you had $100,000 in U.S. equities at the beginning, your money would double every 7.2 years. So after 7.2 years, you would have 200000 and then the money would double again and again. <clears throat> Excuse me. Now these numbers are meaningless in times like now where the emotional parts of our brain go crazy. And uh, looking at some of the websites today, um, and uh, I got 15 uh, alerts from CNBC today. Uh, 15 times they, they sent me a, a urgent alert. So uh, there's there's definitely panic out there. And so the emotional part of our brain takes over in times like this. And I don't care how strong you are as an individual, uh, you will feel a sense of fear. It's it's in our brain unless you, unless you don't have those areas of your brain that are able to activate. So I want to put some intellectual uh, discussion here to and, and I'll keep doing that if markets continue to be the way they are because uh, we need to overwhelm the emotional part with rational thinking. Uh, bonds during this time did 6.2 percent so about 11 years your money would double in bonds. Now here's the here's really the take-home message with this. Although these did pretty well stocks and bonds the average investor only got 2.5 percent return. 2.5 percent so it would take you 20-something years to double your money, the average investor in America. And I know we all think we're the better investor. We all think we're above average. But the average person in this country during this time period got a lot less than their investments. And I want to show you why. So this is the exact same time period, and this is the S&P 500. So why did equities do 9.9% but... The average investor during this time period, if you lived through this time period and invested, um, and, you know, if we take 100 people, 50% uh, got greater than a 2.5% return. 50% got less. That's what average means. Why did we get such poor returns when it went from $100,000 up to $700,000 over the last 20 years? Well, it has to do with emotion. And... Um, if, if emotion is really disturbing you, um, if it's really disturbing you, I'd ask you to think about when do you need the money that's invested in equity markets? Do you need it today? If you need it today, then you're in the wrong asset. If, uh, you know, like myself, I'm 17 years away from retirement, at least uh, when I desire to retire. Um, doesn't matter what's going on with my investment accounts today. I mean, you know, maybe maybe it does a little, but it really shouldn't. If I if I knew 20 years from now or 17 years from now, my money would double uh, three times over, I'd be okay with that. But the problem with investing is in real time, we are these little specks. We are looking at the TV. We are getting texts, you know, 11 texts today from CNBC telling me that things were terrible. And so what happens uh, very consistently and every single cycle is that we as investors start buying more when markets go up and we sell more when markets go down. This happens time and time again. And I'm also going to send a link to a video, uh, an hour-long video on the, the history of crashes. And crashes have been going on since 1800. Um, those are when they at least recorded the crashes in, in, in monetary markets. Crashes happen. They, they happen a lot. And so are equities more risky uh, when, you, when you buy them here or down here? Um, one one uh, thought leader that I follow says that equities always have the same risk. It's our perception of <laughs> owning equities that is the problem. When, when things are going good, uh, equities seem very, very 
Uh, it seems like a good time to own them. They don't seem risky. When markets start to correct, all of a sudden equities seem dangerous to own. But this is all part of the cyclical nature of markets. And so uh, I would just, the second thing I would tell you is that to remind you that risk is different, uh, volatility is different than losing your money. And the difference between volatility and losing your money is volatility means that you own a very broad base of hundreds, thousands of investments, and they are worth less and they are worth more. Not worthless, but worth less, and they are worth more. They are worth less, they are worth more. And so um, the value of them goes down. But if you own one stock, if you own even a dozen stocks, even 20 stocks, and five of those companies go bankrupt in a downturn, yes, you can be wiped out. That's not volatility. That's That's total loss. And so if you own a diversified portfolio, then it just goes up and down. Um, it, it should not distress us as much as it does, but there's really nothing that I, I found that we can do about it except keep educating ourselves. So we've had this cycle now three times, and this was through 2014, and yes, it's come back down again. Now, this is the really surprising thing about markets. The more markets fall, as long as our country doesn't go bankrupt, um, and all the companies in the world don't go bankrupt. When companies fall, um, when stocks fall in price, their expected return goes up. So every time that markets go down and people start panicking and selling, if they would just hold on, um, they'd be fine. The expected return going forward is greater. And so if you are an accumulator like myself, um, I would just ask you to take a look at your accounts, hear all the news, but just remind yourself that you are an accumulator and you're continuing to buy and that this is not this is not as bad as it seems if you need the money 17 years from now. And if you're retired and you have half your money in equities and half your money in cash and bonds, well then you're going to spend the half of your money that's not in equities. And by selling, um, we've already paid the price of markets going down. Now markets can go down further, but eventually... Uh, the companies are going to have enough earnings that their prices are going to be uh, interesting. And so the more equities go down, the more we've already paid the price and the harder uh, the harder it is to sell. But then when you get down to the final position where you just can't take it anymore, you panic and sell. And so let me show you uh, quickly uh, Leading Edge Financial Planning's uh, thoughts, systematic thoughts around investing. So... It's all about allocation, asset allocation, which means what percentage of stuff do you put into different investments. Um, it should be driven by goals, not not um, in risk tolerance, not, you know, if you think investments are going up right now, if you think stocks are going up right now, your allocation should always be uh, consistent. If, if goals in your life don't change, now if you lose your job and you're going to need to use your money that's in retirement accounts, that's different. If somebody dies and uh, they're not insured and you need money, that's different. But if your goals are still the same, um, you really don't want to change your uh, investments at a point when things are massively uh, pessimistic. Um, it's easy for me to say that it's hard to do, but um, but you know you want to have enough bonds that and and cash that when markets go down, you don't feel so bad, and you want to have enough stocks and equities in portfolios that when markets go up you feel good when markets go up and you will make a good return so diversification is critical don't own 5 10 20 stocks don't pick stocks that's been shown to be a loser's game diversify as much as you can and that way you're worried more about volatility than you are about um about just losing your money um, and then control the controllables is the other one I, I want to mention. Um, low expense funds, uh, avoid behavioral investment biases. That's what I'm talking about right now. And don't let the short-term information, the noise that's out there, uh, the market, the, uh, the, the machine of uh, the news media is just doing everything they can to scare the living daylights out of us. If you have 10 years or more, chances of this... Uh, um, correction being permanent is very little. So this is the famous Ibbotson's chart and this only goes through 2012 but 
What we see here is we see 100% equities has a much bumpier ride. 75% has a less bumpy ride. 50% has a less bumpy ride. The differences in, in returns over this really long period of time, this is a logarithmic chart. It's huge. But the thing I want to mention is that this was a market crash. This was a market crash. There was another market crash in, in, in 08. Um, each one of these is a crash. And if you have a good period of time, the chances that you're going to lose 40, 50, 60 percent of your money is just not huge. Um, now, there's always a chance, and I have to say that for legal reasons. So asset allocation, what you put your stuff in, um, what types of assets uh, gets 91 percent of the, the, the expected return. Picking different stocks adds very little to your chances of getting better return. And market timing adds absolutely nothing. The problem with market timing is if we say if the market goes down another 10%, we're going to sell, then uh, we basically wipe ourselves out from ever investing in equities again. Because when, when do we get back in? What if equities go back up? Will we, will we buy when equities go back up? Uh, the all clear never comes until <laughs> the stock market is much higher and it feels again that uh, investments are less risky. But there's just... Market timing has not shown to work. If it did, I would be advocating it. Stock selection, the same thing. So Charlie put this together, and he just showed that um, if you have a lot more bonds, which is in here, um, in, in the worst uh, year in the, since 1970, you would have been down 4.27%. If you had a more diversified portfolio, you still would have been down 34 0.68% in 2008, but you would have gotten returns of 9.82. So this is the time for us to be brave uh, and keep buying, um, and it may get worse. It, it probably will get worse. Um, let me pause it and just show you a few more slides. So Charlie pulled this uh, this chart, and, and this will be the last chart that I'll talk about. Um, Although this doesn't feel normal in 2016, it is normal for markets to go down and go up. This looks at from 1980 to 2014 that the average decline in a given year was 10%. That's the average decline. And we had many years, um, 80, 81, 82, 17, 18, and 17%, but the, but the markets, those two years finished up two out of three of those years. So the blue is what did the market actually finish at at the end of the year. These red dots are how low did it ever get. So nearly every year we have markets going down. Nearly every year, nearly every year. So how do we know in 1998 if this is a market correction or if this is a crash? We don't know. People predicted a market correction in 98. It didn't come until year 2000. So uh, in 2008, we were down 49% at one time, finished down, I think it was 37%. Um, but most of the years, it's positive. Some of the years, it is negative, and it's, it's tough to live through those years. But again, that's what investing is all about. So, so I leave you with this. Um, I'm not suggesting anyone should be happy with uh, what goes on with markets. Um, you know, I, what I am suggesting, however, is that we enjoy our life and, uh, and appreciate the joys in our life. And, you know, being an investor and, and having money and being having the opportunity for our money to go up and down, um, there's, there's a lot of positive things about that. I mean, you know, what would Warren Buffett do today? Uh, would he be panic stricken or would he uh, understand that this is all part of investing? So, uh, enjoy your lives, um, and I'm here to help. Uh, please uh, contact me if you're if you're concerned about your uh, asset allocation and you don't uh, know if it's uh, appropriate for you. Let's talk. Um, you know, at Leading Edge Financial Planning, we have many tools now to show you what you what you own, and uh, and we we very much want to talk with you about your uh, situation. So, uh, if your goals haven't changed, don't sweat. The small stuff. Anyway, thank you so much. I hope everyone is well and thanks for watching.